You've heard the saying, know thy enemy, right? Well, before you watch Wonder Woman fulfill her destiny to bring peace to Patriarch's world, let's take a moment to tell you everything you need to know about the baddies our girl Princess Diana of Themyscira is up against. Super sleuths were pretty certain when the very first trailer dropped that one of Wonder Woman's foes in the film was none other than Dr. Poison. Dr. Poison, or Princess Maru, made her first appearance in 1942 in Sensation Comics number no. 2, which makes sense since it was called the menace of Dr. Poison. Maru wore bulky clothing and a mask to conceal her gender and identity while heading up a Nazi spy ring. Yikes. Dr. Poison sets out to spoiler alert, poison the U.S. Army's water supply with a reverso drug, which basically Benjamin buttons the infected so far back that they cease to exist. That's rough. Of course, comic books being so keen on continuity, the OG version of Dr. Poison is far from the only version. In 1999, a second Dr. Poison, this one the granddaughter of Maru, carried on the family tradition of androgynous evildoing. But wait, there's more! 2011's New 52 reboot gave us a whole new Dr. Poison. This time, she was the daughter of Russian poison experts, which actually is kind of feasible. After refusing to spy for the US, her parents are imprisoned and end up dying in a Serbian jail. Maru swears revenge and takes up the mantle of Dr. Poison. Kind of a family thing. And guys, if you think that's the final version of Maru, well, hold on to your gas masks. 2016's DC Rebirth altered her story yet again. Dr. Poison's currently Colonel Marina Maru, a Japanese soldier working for Poison, an organization founded by her family. What a family it is. So which version are we going to see in the film? Well, all of them, sort of. Director Patty Jenkins has stated that Dr. Poison, played by Elena Anaya, will be an amalgam of all of the above. As bad as the good, I mean, evil, Doctor sounds, she's not the major villain in the film. That distinction goes to Wonder Woman's main adversary, Ares, God of War. Ares made his first appearance in 1942 in Wonder Woman number no. 1, but by the next issue went by his Roman name, Mars. It's kind of like when in high school you're Robbie, and then in college you're like, nah, I'm Robert. Anyway, in 1987, George Perez restored the Greek name Ares, and despite the numerous incarnations since then, is the version of Ares that is most often used. Ares, Mars, A Diddy, whatever name he's using, one thing never changes. He is the cause of all the evil, all the war, and pretty much every horrible thing that happens on Earth. Ares is like the original weapon of mass destruction. The immortal god's greatest desire is to destroy and conquer humankind, and since he's evil and all, he'll stop at nothing to accomplish that, even if it requires him to possess someone's body like he did in post-crisis with low-level criminal Ari Buchanan becoming Ares Buchanan. I guess it was just super lucky that they had such similar sounding names. When DC revamped their lineup in 2011, Ares got an extreme makeover. In this new continuity, Wonder Woman was the daughter of Zeus, meaning she was Ares' half-sister. This version of Ares wasn't a pissed off hulking dude dressed like a professional wrestler, but a withered old man more pessimistic than bloodthirsty. Eventually, he kicked the bucket, and Wonder Woman took over as the god of war. Ares was absent from all promotions for the Wonder Woman movie, save an early look at an action figure. Given he's wearing a skull, you can't see his face, and he looks like hell, literally, the classic portrayal of the god of W.A.R. is pretty dead on. So, there you go! Two classic Wonder Woman baddies on the big screen at last. If there is a god, Egg Fu will show up in a post-credits scene. Like the video? Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more.